Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today I'm going to be working on a Dinky 30V milk float and this is going to be a resto mod. So this is a milk float. Um, when I first got this model I didn't know what a milk float was. It, I didn't recognize what this little truck was but um, it's a British I guess a milk truck. Um, we had milk trucks that were slightly different but I guess it's not uh, not a huge difference anyway it's kind of a boring model so I've decided to uh, convert this one to be a race support vehicle so this one has a cast bottom there's just a single rivet and the back is held on with a little hook that goes through the outer ca upper casting and so we'll get started by taking the thing apart so I'm putting it in my milling machine and I hold it in with a little foam. This one, the rivet is very close to the front axle, so I can't use the big drill that I usually like to use these days. So I'm going to use a smaller drill. And most of the time I will start it with a center drill because that uh, doesn't flex or anything, so it stays where I put it. And you can see I'm using a smaller drill, but it's a good sharp one. And that one was too small, so I picked a bigger one. And that looks like the right size. And there she comes out. And I have to pull it out from the end. A little bit of cool tool, which is basically oil. Uh, these castings are very chewy and I've broken off so many drill bits uh, I don't want to do that anymore so I got to take extra time and put in the, lube, the cutting lubricant and this helps keep the the alloy from sticking to the to the cutting edges of the drill and that way preventing it from getting stuck in there and breaking off so to tap it I just bring it out on the bench and I use my Osborne Blue Wizard uh, machine tap and tap the hole and in this case the the post was sticking up a little bit so I want to smooth it and flatten it down so that the screw goes a little bit deeper so it's actually going to put pressure on the other casting when when I put it together so I put in my 440 button socket head cap screw and now to taking the, the wheels off. So I use my file with the one edge ground off of it and file down the, the deformed mushroom. It takes a few strokes. Uh, it might be faster to use the Dremel tool for sure. But then again, it takes time to bring out the Dremel tool set it up with the right stone and by the time I've done all that I can have these off with the file and it doesn't make a lot of noise and if you slip a little bit it's not likely to do too much damage to the model so there's one tire that's good this one doesn't look so good there's no way I'm going to get that tire off in one piece it's all brittle and cracked. So here's the next one. You can see I put it always onto the uh, axle. It makes it easier to handle when I'm taking it off. This one is just as brittle and cracked. There's no way you can save these wheels. They, they are done. And I don't even know why I'm showing you this because in the end uh, I'm going to put on uh, fancier wheels so these ones are not going to get reused at least not on this model but they will be used on the next one that I have just the body and so I will save those up so here we are stripping paint I put some boiling water some caustic soda a little bit more there that's the bubbly reaction that I want to get and you can see the whole liquid has turned red from the red paint so that stripped the base pretty good it's a little bit there on the upper deck and 
the body it just has a few flakes on it so here there's some some of the paint didn't quite get done but it's already softened up so I'm just using a toothpick to to take that stuff off This one you can see there's little bits and flakes here and there but they're very the see these come they just pop right off they're 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 removed but they're just sort of barely clinging onto the body might be better just to bring out the wire brush and all that stuff will come off So I showed you a few strokes, there's a little more, but uh, I think it gets boring if you're watching too much of me brushing away at it. So that came up beautiful. So now I've got my Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. I love this stuff. Here I'm using, looks like gray. It's going to be different colors than the original model was. In fact, it's going to match the the Austin A30, uh, which I turned into a race car. You can watch that uh, race car video so you get an idea of where this is uh, coming from. So you can see that the casting is a bit rough. And as soon as you look at it after it's been painted, uh, you can see I'm going to have to do some work on it. So I'll clean up a little bit of the casting. And then I'm going to go on with the uh, Bondo uh, glazing putty to fill in the flaws in the, uh, in the casting. And I'm going to have to sand all that down. I have to show you this stuff because otherwise it looks like you just strip the paint and paint over it and it'll look beautiful but now you need to correct problems with uh, if there's a poor casting in this case there's a lot of little flaws in the casting and I wanted to smooth that out and I wanted to have a very nice clean finish when it's done and the only way is to go in like this and fix up all the tiny little areas so it's a lot of time sanding, repairing, and making it smooth. And then I can put another coat of paint on it. So there's the A130 before it got its race livery. Was already planning this so I was mixing paint that's too yellowy it's got to be drabbed down a bit but I didn't show that because I didn't want to show half an hour of mixing paint so I'm using an empty jar because I can mix my paint and I can close it up and then next day or two days or three days down the road the paint is still just as I left it and I can put it into the airbrush so I made a little bit shorter version of uh, painting it
I have to get the inside. I have to be very careful on this one to get the inside because the inside is entirely visible because of those huge openings. And I get a nice glossy finish because of the, uh, the leveling thinner that I used. Now this is to paint the base. Uh, the base doesn't matter so much on the bottom, but this one, the top part, is very visible. It's the milk float deck, and that's going to be visible. So I'm using this metallic paint, again with the leveling thinner. The leveling thinner uh, dries slower than ordinary thinner, and so the paint has time to smooth out and be shinier. Now this metallic paint, it's a Mr. Hobby, it's just a beautiful and when it's done it was a it's just a gorgeous finish. It looks like a piece of stainless steel. It's just awesome. So now I'm taping up the uh, milk float. I'm going to paint it two-tone mostly because I want to have a white background because I'm going to be putting a lot of decals on this and the decals I got uh, don't have any white they're on transparent and so a decal that looks really good with on the white paper uh, it doesn't look so good when it goes onto a colored surface because there's no white in it so in order to do the decals I, I have to either uh, put a blank white decal underneath and then lay the transparent decal over top or I can paint part of the vehicle white. So that's what I'm doing here. So that bottom part is where I will have all of the uh, race product advertising, the sponsorships, and I won't have to put any white underneath because it'll that part of the surface will already be white. Now I've had a lot more luck than I had at the beginning uh, with taping these things up because I've been letting them dry at least two full days before I go and start taping it up for two-tone paint. I also take the, it's ordinary masking tape, but before I stick the ordinary masking tape on, and the, this one's the Tamiya masking tape, it's pretty safe. Uh, but the other masking tape is just the ordinary stuff, but what I do is I just un unsticky it by putting it on my hand so it's not quite as sticky uh, and it won't grab the the paint when it comes off. All of the fine lines, the actual lines that are going to show up are done in that Tamiya paint, a tape. So there we have it, the fenders are still yellow but now I can put my decals over the white paint. If I took this uh, GIP decal and put it onto the yellow body, it wouldn't look right because wherever it's supposed to be white, it would be the yellow of the body. And you'll see that some of the decals will go on to the colored paint, and I have to make sure they're ones that still look decent even if, uh, even if it's not on white surface. Now I'm speeding up the process. I'm just showing putting them on and very minimal, but in fact, there's a lot of time goes into adjusting these and squeezing out the water. And this is one trick I like to use. Uh, you can see I rolled, I rolled a piece of tissue over it and that's, uh, it's actually Kim wipe material, which has no lint. And I kind of roll my fingers because I find if I try to squeeze out water initially. See there I roll it and that way the decal doesn't move uh, when I squeeze out the water. So it's a little bit better advantage than just trying to push water out with a q-tip which tends to move the decal around. Now this decal doesn't need to have a white background because it's like a pinstripe painted type thing so it can go straight on to the yellow surface. Now the water I'm using, I, I put water initially 
and it's soapy water because if you put non-soapy water it tends to beat up and then you're putting the decal straight onto the paint and that glue from the decals tends to stick right to that paint and you can't move the decal afterwards and if you've been watching my videos I've had some serious trouble with expensive decals and fighting with it to try and get it to release from the initial spot where I put it so the soapy water prevents that from happening so I've not had that trouble since I started using a drop of of dish soap in my decal water now it looks like I'm putting these on really quickly but uh, there is time in between uh, a lot of it I'm doing editing even in the camera so that uh, you're not just looking at empty space while I'm doing this I got these decals from an Australian company but it is just clear decal that you could print on your own inkjet printer. The thing to do, and I understand other people uh, like Andrew of Maple Leaf uh, Matchbox Makeovers, he is using a uh, laser, color laser printer, and he's going to be trying with white toner for the laser printer. So we'll find out how he makes out with that. But I don't know if I can afford to get a color laser printer just for making decals. So here's a little stand I made out of cardboard. It lets me tilt the model up so that I can do the detailing better. Uh, here's an example where I need to have a white background. So I cut out a white, plain white, um, nothing printed on it, uh, decal paper. I did spray it with paint because that decal paper is so fine. If you don't put paint on it, it's you can't handle it. It's too thin. It just wrinkles up and you have no control. But I cut it to the same size as this fairly complicated little decal. But it's big enough that I could work on it and I think it came out pretty good. What I don't show you on this one is that in here somewhere there's this part where I let this thing dry for a little while so that it doesn't move when I put the number on. But I edited that part out so all you see is me putting putting the number over top. If I go too fast then the, the dark uh, or the, the colored decal will go stick to the white one and the white one will move with it and sometimes, sometimes that can be trouble. And there I am using a Kim wipe and the method I, I like is to roll my thumb over it. Yeah, I was getting frustrated with having trouble with my decals and so this is kind of this one and the racing car that it goes with tons of decals it's a lot of practicing so now I'm getting more confident and I'm going to be able to put more decals or at least not have trouble when I need to put a decal on practice uh, makes you better at it This is a tricky one. I could have done it differently. What I was thinking is on this one, I could have put this decal onto white decal paper, let it dry, and then I could have cut it out as one piece. Uh, some, some decals would lend it to that uh, method, but I didn't think of it until it was too late.
Now I'm using this method. Uh, the cars the, that I'm that the race car is the Austin A30 was at a time period where apparently they had you had a square painted number plate in the UK. And so that's what I'm putting here is a square number on the front and the strip was a metal one uh, that would be bolted to the back of the car. And then this, this one would be painted onto the driver's side fender. So I wanted to match the racing car, which has that layout as well. So there's a lot of little clippings of paper from cutting out all those decals to exactly the right shape and another collection on the floor. Now to match the, the racing car that this, uh, of this team, it's going to have a cross of St. Andrew on the roof, the same as the racing car. And the racing on the car, I did it using decals, but my ink cartridge ran out and I wasn't able to uh, do the the blue color that I needed on the on the roof so I decided I'm gonna tape it up and I'm gonna paint it it's a big enough surface that it's not hard for me to tape up the shape of the of the cross and then just mix up my paints and spray paint it that shows you how I'm getting more confident using using the airbrush You can see I'm mostly covering it with paper, so they gain less chance of pulling up some of those decals if it's just paper over top of it and it's just taped at the very edges. But I need to make sure that it is all covered up because I don't want any stray paint going over top of any of the other surfaces, especially the ones that have got decals on them. So it's an oddball shape, so it's always a little bit of trouble getting it taped up, but there you have it. So this is the background, it's actually the cross, the background will be painted over top of the cross. So I'm painting this uh, white and then I'm going to tape off the, uh, the diagonal cross. I had a couple of goes at this because I've got to make sure that it's going properly corner to corner. And here I'm pressing the edges using the edge of my fingernail and then pressing it where it meets the other tape line so I don't get paint going underneath at those connections. So now I go over it with my blue and I cheated a bit. This blue wound up being too light and I don't show you but I mixed up a little bit darker blue and repainted over top of it. Five minutes later because I was frustrated I didn't wind up showing that on the, on the, on the video. So here I see how well I taped it and it actually came out absolutely perfectly. It looks like there's something at bleeding at the edge, but that's actually uh, on the other tape. There's the last piece and it's absolutely perfect. So now I spray over the entire thing with the uh, Mr. Hobby clear coat. So that protects the decals, it protects the flag. And after doing that, I feel comfortable handling the model and I know I'm not going to accidentally pull up a decal or scratch the paint. 
So here's the here's the wheels that I'd painted silver, but I want to put on these Hot Wheel tires that match. They're actually from the same toys that I got the the wheels for the race car. But these are the rear wheels and they were bigger, so I actually bought two Hot Wheels. And so I'm going to use these on the support vehicle. So I'm drilling a hole. There's enough material in those Hot Wheel wheels that I can put a normal dinky size axle in there if I just drill it out. Of course the only way to hold this on is to glue it in place. And so to make an axle I got a pop rivet and I take the I take the rivet head part off so I've just got these shafts with a head on one end. In this case I won't need the head on the end so I'll just cut those off to the right length. And then I've got to file the ends of the axles flat. So there we are filing four ends to the two different axles. And I'm actually happy I can do this because I don't have to, it's always a pain doing the, the mushroomed ends. And one part I don't really enjoy much because I've bent so many axles. But this one all I do is file these flat and I've got my axles. To hold them on I'm going to go to my trusty five minute epoxy and I'm going to glue the wheels onto the ends of the axles. Fortunately, this job doesn't take very long, so I can do all the ends on the same on the same mixed up uh, epoxy. I've got five minutes to do it once I've mixed it up. Now, what I don't show you is once I put these on. See, I'm putting a little daub of the epoxy and then I put the wheel on, but the wheels are awfully close to the base, so I had to keep turning the wheels while it was drying so that they would they would roll once it's done. And I succeeded, so I wanted to show that by flicking the thing off of the screen. So now time to put it all back together. So again, I've got to slide that uh, little tab into the slot and then put my screw where they had the one rivet. So now it's put together, but I haven't done any detailing. Now this one, it's going to get the full treatment detailing. I'm going to do everything I can. So the first thing is this oddball. This has one headlight. It's a kind of a strange, kind of a strange thing. So I'm going to use a punch and, and I'm going to tape around it because I find that if I try to uh, paint these things, I'm just not steady enough to get the perfect circle. So I've started doing this. I punch, I punch a hole in some tape. That's the right size. And then I put it there. And then I've got to squeeze, I've got to squeeze the edges to make sure that the paint uh, isn't going to go under the tape. So it take a little bit extra time with a toothpick to squeeze all those edges down. In the end, I don't necessarily need the tape there. It certainly gives me confidence because I'm not going to accidentally touch the bodywork. But I can just use the end of the, you know, the applicator tip of the of the chrome marker. And there I have it beautiful. Now this is orange paint for the front marker lights. Eh, it's not clear at all here that it's different from the body color, but it is different. And got to do these little marker lights. Now I have a little accident over on the other side here. Just for some reason I 
bumped something or something happened and that thing just jumped over and put a dab of paint on my decal. So I had to spend a couple minutes cleaning that up. So I worked at it for a little while. And because the paint was what never had a chance to dry, uh, I was able to get it off pretty darn good. So I rescued that. Now for my headlight, my, I like to do when you can, like in this case, have a chrome ring and make the headlight white. And I think that just looks more like a headlight that's on than if you just do the whole thing in silver. So here I'm using the uh, nail painting brush to paint all these little details. There's these little doors on the side and they've each got a little handle. And this little brush is brilliant. It lets me paint this thing in a way more control than if I have a brush with very long bristles. So I love to do these tiny little things using this. The other end of the brush has a little metal ball and this can be used beautifully for painting dots. It's so what it's made for for fingernails is to paint dots which is very handy on these models because it, it's ultimate control. So, just as to remind you where we began, it's a uh, strange looking toy. A lot of the paint stripped off of it. Wheels are all damaged. So let's see what it looks like now. I love that front headlight. Now don't go away right away because I add more to this and I'm going to attach a trailer to it at the end. So hang on until the end of this this lets you look at the model just as it is now I'm not going to be showing you I, I build a trailer uh, my friend who does uh, 3d printing printed up a tandem trailer for me to hold the racing car and there's no trailer hitch on there yet and I skipped showing you anyway please like share and subscribe if you like this video but here's what it looks like he printed up that toolbox, I machined up those spare tires, and there the race car is on the tandem trailer being pulled behind the race support vehicle. So we all hope he's going to go out and win a lot of races. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Timo's Dinky Detailing. Until next time, be seeing you!